The Psalter is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon, praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth, all peoples, princes, and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Throughout the centuries, um, various denominations, locations, catechisms have been used to instruct the young and adults in what the life of faith is about. A consistent question that's asked at the beginning of those is, is what, what's the purpose of life? <laughs> like, why are we here? And the traditional answer that's given is that we are here to glorify God. We exist to glorify God. This gets lost in our day because so many things are glorified, you know, soap or ball players or something. It's always glorified. How do we glorify God? Uh, St. Augustine, back in the early 5th century, preached a wonderful sermon. He was talking in Latin so he could distinguish between two words that we would translate love, udi and frui. Sounds like bubblegum flavors or something. Udi and frui. Udi love is love of use. I could say that I love money. I don't want to sleep with it or put it up as wallpaper. I love money because I can use it for something else that I actually want, if you get that kind of love. Frui love is a different love. It's love of enjoyment. It's when you love something just you, like you just do. I just love, it's an understatement, I love chocolate. And I don't love chocolate because what I get out of the chocolate, which is not good for me, but I love chocolate and I just will have it. That's a hint if you're looking for a gift for your pastor. <laughs> Ever. What Augustine says is that too often we go at God with this love of use. I want to use God to get something that I want. God will help me with my projects. But the God actually wants to be loved with fruity love. God wants you just to love God because you love God. Thomas Merton said that, I love this, a tree gives glory to God by being a tree. Like that's a great thing. You see a tree by the side of the road and that tree is giving glory to God by being what it is. It's being a tree. Uh, you young people, well, people will try to jam you into some mold of what they think you ought to be. St. Francis's father thought that he was supposed to be a cloth merchant and and Pope Francis' mother wanted him to be a doctor. Somebody's got something they want you to be. Society wants you to be a consumer above all else. But God calls you to be a saint. God calls you to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. A tree is an apt image, right? The tree, we do well to be like trees, right? The, the, the trees have, what makes a tree work above the ground is what goes on under the ground, unseen. they are deep roots. It gives the tree balance and solidity and it gets its nutrients from down deep in the dark <clears throat> where no one can see. A tree gives its gifts to others, whether it's fruit or wood or shade or nesting for birds. The tree really exists for others in many ways. It's a wonderful thing. A tree gives glory to God by being a tree. We're all made to be in awe of God. We're all made to be grateful to God, but we lose this, right? Because we think that we're in charge of everything and we earn everything. Rabbi David Wolpe wrote these wonderful words. The ability to express gratitude can be squelched by disuse. The less you express gratitude, the less grateful you are. The more you express gratitude, the more grateful that you are. And the way this works is actually pretty interesting. Uh, last weekend, uh, Lisa and I went to the Aviation Museum out at the airport. Uh, our friend Albert Doolin, church member, has published a book uh, that's a wonderful uh, book. 
uh, called Billy Hartwing that I would commend to you. Anyway, he was doing a book signing there. So we decided to see the museum while they were there, and they've got all these planes there, which is cool. But the most interesting, the biggest plane there, is that American Airlines plane that landed on the Hudson River, if you remember the story, by 1549. And they got videos of people after they got off that plane safely. And you ought to hear them talk about God, right? They're like, God is amazing. I thought we were going to die. God got me off that plane. And that's pretty cool. I talked to somebody the other day. They'd been back to the oncologist, and the oncologist said, there's no recurrence of your cancer. This person was saying, God is amazing, right? And we, and we should do that, but Wolpe says this. Wolpe says there's no trick to being grateful for that which is rare and special, like getting fished out of the river, or your cancer not recurring. There's no trick to being grateful for that which is rare and special. To be grateful for that which is always there is difficult. And the greatest art in life is being grateful for what is always there. Like the grass is still growing. The street you came here on is still there. Gravity is working. Like if gravity broke down right now, we'd have chaos in this room, right? Your heart is beating inside your chest. Like your respiratory system is working. Your brain, is your brain working? Your brain is working even now. These things that go on all the time. How do we be grateful for that which is always there? Lisa and I, the night before last, watched that video that's uh, out on Netflix now from Brené Brown. It's really pretty remarkable, and she says a great many uh, things that are wonderful. One of them she says, though, is that, is that one of the keys to reducing your anxiety and finding your purpose in life is expressing gratitude for small things. Small things. The example that she gave was from a woman that she had been counseling who had a child that died. It was like a six-year-old child had died. And what that child was remembered for was always slamming the screen door when he came in the house. He'd come through and bang! Parents would say, don't slam the door! Bang! Don't slam the door! He said after the child died, he'd been gone about a year. This woman noticed her husband was by that door one day slamming it. What he said was, I'd give anything for my son to slam that door one more time. How do we give thanks for what is always there? I have a wife. We've been married 33 years. She's always there. How do I feel grateful for what is always there? St. Francis of Assisi loved this psalm. Uh, that we heard Psalm 148 and inspired him to read that, write that great canticle of the creatures where he talks about brother sun and sister moon. I should have paid attention to that yesterday. I was out yesterday afternoon and to me the sun didn't feel like brother sun. It felt like I was whining, like yeah, it's hot. I'm such a weenie, right? Francis called that same son brother son. It's like we're kin. The son does so many wonderful things for us. We're blessed by the son, brother son, sister moon, the stars. We do ourselves well to drive out in the country and see the stars. They're up there, but we're, we miss it because of all that man-made stuff. There's so much to notice. Uh, Annie Dillard wrote a wonderful book called Pilgrim at Tinker Creek, won the Pulitzer Prize. It should win the Pulitzer Prize for three decades or something. It's an absolutely fabulous book. And what she does in this book is she just takes you out and shows you stuff that's out in nature, hummingbirds and barnacles and <laughs> woolly worms, like you name it. She says, it's like God, God just you know, like couldn't stop making new amazing things. And, and I love her best line. She says, the least we can do is notice. Like, Gratitude is like just noticing. Like, do, do you notice what's out there? Do you notice other people? Our, these confirmation students, they've, they've been amazing. They've been in arduous labor for a year learning all kinds of stuff. We downloaded theology into their heads. It's absolutely amazing. We have confirmation mentors who've taken their year to walk in this journey with them. And we collected comments from those mentors. And my favorite one is such a simple thing. It said, being a confirmation mentor has given me a glimpse into my child's world. Sometimes you think about the world of an eighth grader and you think, oh my gosh, when I was an eighth grader, 
Like I hated middle school, kids picked on me, it was awful. You see a glimpse into your child's where you just notice, right? Gratitude is noticing. That's the interesting thing, I think, in the psalm, I don't know if you heard it, is that uh, the psalm praises God for all these obvious things, the sun and the moon and the stars and the creatures, but then it thanks God, it praises God for monsters. Like, you know, what is that? <laughs> like, you know, I'm thinking Game of Thrones or something. Like, thanks God for monsters and the creeping things. Are you grateful for creeping things? St. Francis of Assisi, he would step on a roach. He said, that's a creature that God made. Reminds me of that old line from C.S. Lewis, uh, they asked him if there would be dogs in heaven. He said, well, yeah, there'll be dogs in heaven. I'm not so sure about cats. And then, <laughs> and then somebody said, well, how about mosquitoes? And he said, well, that's interesting. He said, uh, there is a heaven for mosquitoes, but it's the same place that's hell for people. <laughs> the psalm is interesting. It includes monsters. It says, it thanks God for the hail. It thanks God for storms. This is really important. We get confused, don't we? And if you look at Facebook, people, sometimes they do this. They post a photo of like a beautiful sunset or the beach or something, that's, and they'll say, God does good work. And I don't want to argue with that. God does do good work. But let's be clear. God doesn't just create the beautiful sunset and the fabulous river view. God creates that stretch of land that nobody wants to take a photo of and put on Facebook. God made the bushes that aren't photogenic. God made all that stuff, right? And that's important because God made it, but it's also important for us, right? It's important for us because, I mean, I don't know how you feel about you, but I don't know. I don't always feel like that beautiful sunset and the wonderful river view. When I was in eighth grader, I sure didn't. I thought, God, I'm a pathetic human being. I'll never, I'll never get out of eighth grade. I don't know. Sometimes people treat you like you're not photogenic or beautiful. But what the psalm says, it's, it's all beautiful because it's all made by God. You're beautiful. You are wonderful. You are good. That's eighth graders and all of you. You can forget that when you're 72, right? It's that you're beautiful and you're made by God. You once were a small next to nothing in your mother's womb. She didn't even know that you were there yet, but God knew. God is beginning to shape and form you. There's so much to be grateful for, just the gift of life, to be grateful for Jesus. Jesus, I mean, he, he's unlike any leader we've ever seen. He, he hung out with all the wrong people. He touched the untouchables. He healed. He had compassion. He wasn't mad at anybody. He wasn't judging anybody he was just he was all good and kind and amazing and he sacrificed himself for others it's amazing god raised him from the dead so we may have hope and if you want to give thanks to god for something it's that we have hope it's not just up to you and it's not just you got to make it all happen no it's up to it's in god's hands your life is in god's hands <laughs> your future is god's and that's why we're grateful and can never stop being grateful. A tree gives glory to God by being a tree. We give glory to God by being the beautiful creatures that God made us to be, noticing, being grateful for what's always there. Thanks be to God.